Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of GTA Vice City The Definitive Edition. And if you guys enjoyed this series, please do drop a like on it because it does help the series out a lot. But on this part, we're going to be doing anti um police missions and we're going to finish up the um, Cuban um, and Haitian gang storyline. So hope you guys enjoy this. Juju Scramble. Whoa. Whoa. Come in, my dear, and rest your soul. You must be the big bad man my granddaddy been chatting about. Tell me things about you, you know, when he visits, and about the others who wait for you. Now, we all dead from long time, but you, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. <laughs> I got a message to come here. Can you hear them? Them calling your name, boy, must want you pretty bad, don't you think? Now, you do all and you pull turn, and maybe she help you. Maybe she can give you a little juju after all of this. Give you some magic to give the llama and the stink eye. Mm. Look, this is all very, um, give me what? Shh. I, I, I think I got the wrong address. Give me these things, Tommy. The nasty, proud foo-foos. Mm. Been making my boys shake their heads. Now they told the policeman where me been stashing my powders. They think it drugs. Them stupid. Now be a good boy, Tommy, and go and get the powders for Auntie Poole. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So these cutscenes are um uh, are a bit weird, and um uh, if you notice, she's drugging Tommy. That's why Tommy's like his speech is kind of slurred, and he's all he's just um uh, he's just kind of slow in his reaction because she's drugging him. And so she's basically tricking Tommy into um, uh, into doing jobs for her. But the weird thing is, the the drugs, whatever she drugged Tommy with, was in the soup that she gave him. But she didn't. Um, uh, Tommy was a bit drugged when he came in, which makes me believe that there was something in the air as well. But then why isn't she drugged? That's that's what I was always a little confused on that part. It might have been just something that was overlooked. Um, but uh, this part, um, uh, this part gets a little bit um, uh, annoying because you ha you're gonna have a lot of cops chasing you. So just make sure you have a car turned and just get ready to run. So Auntie Pole wants you to pick up her drugs before the um, before the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, go after it. They're a federal agency that is in charge of drug trafficking. Um, and dealing with drug trafficking and the um the DEA when they're going after somebody for drug trafficking they're going after big time people like you know suppliers you know drug lords they're not really going to go after like dealers that's usually up to the local police okay now we get the next one here whoa 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 that was a bit crazy there Oh my god, five stars? I forgot how bad this was. My god, look at this, this is... And this is ridiculous, this is, and this, I remember this place, this is the place where Martinez betrays you a second time in Vice City Stories, that alley. Oh man. Okay. Oh no. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's the FBI right there. And, um, the... My god, I gotta fight my way through this right now. Run, Tommy, run! Yeah, this, for being her, just her first mission, this mission is a bit difficult. I like how he then just walks right towards her house and the police just completely break off their pursuit. Oh man, yeah, that mission is stressful. And like I um, picked up earlier, there is an, an um, there is an M4 that's right there. Oh. Oh, explosion's still going off. Oh, bombs away. Oh, sorry, I, I must have the wrong address. Well, you might as well come in and rest your souls and have some tea. Do you have something there for me, Tommy? Yeah. This 
place feels familiar to me. A uh, uh, smell from childhood, a deja vu. Now, Tommy, I'm going to whisper a little errand for you. Hear me well, I. You look like someone I, I... Them have fast boats they use to cross the seas with drugs. It is their livelihood. Me nephew been making little flying bombs to take them out. Blow the boats to coffin wood. Thanks for the tea. Okay, so it's tea, not soup. I, for, um, I mixed that up that she was drugging soup. She's drugging his tea. So this is probably um, Anti Polay's most hated mission um, because of the RC plane. But um, uh, if you time it right and you know the controls, I don't think it's actually that bad of a mission. So Anti Polay wants you to um. Uh, Kill the Cuban gangsters that are on this um, dock at Starfish Island, and they're using these speedboats to smuggle drugs. R2 to accelerate. Now, to make this mission easy, when you drop your first bomb, you want to try to get as many as possible before they scatter. Okay, I just took out a bunch of them there. And eventually they will make a run for it and they'll um they'll try to get in the boats. This this plane is a bit damaged too. Did I get him? I got him. Okay. Now I know what some people are wondering. Some people are watching this and being like, how the hell did you just do that so quickly with one plane? So it's like I said, like you just have to get used to the mission. When you get used to the mission, you get used to the controls, the RC missions aren't that bad. The one RC mission that I think is bad regardless of whether you get used to the controls or not is Supply Lines San Andreas. That mission, I will agree, is really terrible. But like, you know, Demolition Time and like, you know, this one, like, um, this mission bombs away that's what it was called they're not that bad if you get used to it and the trick to the plane is just fly in a straight line try to fly low but don't fly too low and drop your bomb like one second before you're over the target so like one second before you're over the target just drop your bomb and you'll be good so this is her final mission now hello hello uh, i'm looking for somebody around here you're looking hungry tommy do i know you Hush now! One more thing and I can let you go, Tommy. My boys gone war with them boys, but no guns. While they fight in the streets, you will take this rifle. No one sees you, no one hears you. Now, Tommy, you do this for me, and you no longer tie to my apron strings. Okay, Auntie. So, um, uh, we must win this battle. If all our boys die, we lose. So, um, uh, in this one, um, if you notice her dialogue, she's like, my boys going to war with them boys. Um, that's a bit weird the way she said it. The reason is because that's the censored dialogue. She originally said, my uh, boys gone to war with them Cuban boys. That's what she, she would originally say. So there's a lot of dialogue that's been censored. For Umberto, there's a few things that he says that's censored that's, um, not in the original, and then what Auntie, um, Pole says. So, pick up that pill, it, it slows down time. And you're going to want to um, uh, take out the um, Cuban gangsters as fast as you can. But um, uh, be careful because this mission is very easy to fail because the, um, the Haitian gangsters can die pretty quickly. But they seem to agree to have a street brawl. And yet um, uh, Auntie Pole wants um, uh, Tommy to go up on the roof and use a sniper rifle, which that's um, pretty much breaking those rules. Okay, they brought reinforcements.
Oh, that didn't hit him? There we go. Ooh, headshot. Oh, here we go. One of them has a katana. We want to drop that guy. I know this is a little bit frustrating and boring when you do like the slow motion, but this is really the best way to do this mission. Uh... There we go, we got it. So now that was Antipole's final mission, and we're, we are now able to play Umberto's final mission, which that ends the storyline. So let's go on over and um, uh, do Umberto's final mission then. Oh, who's this? Tommy! Tommy! Why you coming back here, Fee? Let me tell you, we don't want to see you around here no more. So you will get that phone call. If you approach um, uh, Auntie Polay's house, you will actually get that phone call where she will actually say, what are you doing back here? We don't want to see you around here no more. I'm surprised that Tommy didn't have any dialogue to say back to her there. Because at this point, Tommy has to have realized that he was um, drugged. And I remember a long time ago, the uh, GTA Wiki used to say that for the final, like, Umberto mission, that um, Tommy got really angry and um, uh, helped, like, the um, the Cubans destroy the um, the Haitian gang's, like, um, drug lab at the end as, like, revenge, but then that was changed. But I don't know whether Tommy, like, realized that he was drug drugged at the end, or, um, or what, or whether he was doing it just for money, or what he realized what he did, um... So this is the final mission now. Hey! <laughs> hey lady! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to make love like a man. You know that chica? Something like this. Hey baby! I wouldn't oh touch you with a ten foot pole. Humberto Rovina, he likes the lady, so not funny. some goat in a skirt. Tommy! Tommy! I love you! I love you! Let's go! <laughs> go where? Can I get a cup of coffee first? No time for coffee! Besides, I just had one! Oh. Tommy, how do you take out a snake? You bite him in the ass! <laughs> you go and get us a little car. When you get it, come back and pick up my boy, Pepe. And take them out to such and such. Their processing plant. Whatever you say, Humberto. Hey, Tommy! Tommy! Use their solvent as an explosive. Boom! Bye-bye! Humberto, what about you? Uh, I'm going to stay behind and watch <laughs> over that cafe with Papa. He's not feeling so good, you know? The last thing I needed was this. Maybe the last thing I needed was an enema, but this comes close. <laughs> so, um, if you notice, there's, um... There's a few pauses in what um uh, what Umberto says, and that's part of the censored dialogue. So, when this uh, game first came out, there's a whole controversy with the um the Cuban and the Haitian gang missions, and so a lot of the original dialogue Damn, was actually nice censored. I can understand why they did it because they didn't want to get sued. Um, this but these dog, um man. these characters were made um designed to be ignorant. That was the whole purpose of them. So. They were designed for you not not to necessarily like them. You know, they do nice pizzas here. Whoa, man, you drive like a crazy bitch. <laughs> <pig. laughs> Hola, amigos. Oye, the solvent is around the back, amigo. Bueno, putas. Muerte. Vamos. Vamos, indeed. Hello, my compadres. Vamos does mean let's go, I know that. Um. You lost, man? So we're going to be following these guys, and the guy in the car with us here is Pepe, but I believe that Rico is actually in one of the other cars, so Rico apparently did survive the boat explosion, as ridiculous as it is. Okay, in you go. 
And the, um, the, um, Haitian car is actually the only car in Vice City that has hydraulics, I believe. So they're using these, um, uh, they're using these cars to be able to get in. I probably should have used, um, armor. And the reason it's called Trojan Voodoo is because Voodoo, um, uh, that's in relation to the, um, uh, Haitian beliefs. And then, um, a Trojan, like the Trojan horse in the, um, uh... In the um, uh, Trojan War, where they sent in like a wooden horse and used that to sneak in to Troy. I recommend to clear out the um, drug lab first before you um, uh, plant the bombs. Okay, probably best to um, uh, plant the bomb at the top first just so you have a little bit more time. First bomb planted. Second one, and third one now. Run! Okay, now this place is gonna blow up. Um. Okay, now they're gonna shut the gate here. The first time that I played this as a kid, I was confused on where I was supposed to go, what I was supposed to do at this point. But when they close the gate, what you do is you just run to the right side here, you run right up the staircase, and you just run here. Look at that. I don't know how those two cars survived it underneath. That's a bit ridiculous. And we got a trophy for that too. So we have done it. That is the um uh That is the uh the end of the um uh, Cuban Haitian gang storyline. And if you want to have to do anything in Little Haiti, like get hidden packages or anything like that, I strongly recommend you do that before you complete this mission. Hey, how's the cafe? Oh, wonderful. Incredible, Tommy. Incredible. No wimps, Tommy. Just real men. And the beautiful women. Anyway, I wanted to tell you, me and Papi, to us, you're Cuban. You have proved yourself, man. You got big cojones. Well, thank you, Umberto. Nobody said that to me since I left jail. See you around. <laughs> but, um, uh, Little Haiti, whenever you go back here now, the Haitian gang members will actually shoot at you. They will, um, uh, they will be very aggressive. They will open fire. It's not as bad as St. Mark's in, like, um, uh, yeah, it's not as bad as St. Mark's in, uh, in, in GTA 3, but it's still, uh, bad. Okay. I would, I would love to have seen Anti Polay's reaction to the um uh to this place blowing up. You're probably wondering why I'm going back here because there's actually a hidden weapon here. Okay, there we go on that. So now let's get that that hidden weapon here. You can only get this hidden weapon when you when you finish this mission. Jump up here. Oh, whoa, no, no, no. Climb up here. Okay, go this way. Run across this. Oh, no, 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 come on, no. Damn. I guess the staircase is probably the best way to get up there. Wow, what are these cars doing over here? Yeah, I got a wanted level. But I'll show you guys, there is a secret weapon hidden here. It's a little bit hard to get to right now, because I keep falling through the, um... The ground. Did they, like, not... Did they not program the roof correctly here? That, like, you can't...
Yeah, you literally fall right through it. Even though there should be a place that you run on, you literally fall right through it. Yeah, that's some. Okay, so I guess I gotta run on that pole to the right side. Oh, no, come on. Damn, I, this is this was just nor normally so much easier in the original Vice City. <sighs> I hate that I keep falling through that. Aw, oh, damn. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, well, I'll come right back to that and I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, so we're back here now and I don't have to worry about the, um... I don't have to worry about the police shooting at me now. Okay, so here we go. This is what I wanted to show you guys. Sucks that I lost all my other guns getting to it, but this is where you can get a minigun. So, if you ever want to get a free minigun, this is the place that you go to to get it. Um, and uh, you have to... You have to climb on this pole here, um, this is the pole that you have to walk on, because if you try to go through that, that grate, you're gonna fall through it each time. It's a bit frustrating. So you see, whenever you, um, uh, whenever you come back to Little Haiti, this happens, they will attack you on sight, and this can be, um, this can be very frustrating, especially when you're trying to do something. If you drive through here for a taxi mission, or if you're doing, like, a firefighter or paramedics, um, uh, they will just rush up to you and, um, uh, it'll make very doing anything very difficult. That's why I recommend that if you have to do anything there, you do it before you complete the, um, the gang storyline missions. And so I thought I would include in this part, um, Colonel Cortez's final mission. Circumstances force a hasty departure, amigo. What's the problem? Ah, uh, the French want their missile technology back, and after that last incident, I feel it is time to find safer homes. Wouldn't it be safer to fly? I'd be dead before I reach check-in. Besides, I need to get my merchandise out of the country. Need another gun? You, my friend, are worth ten guns. <laughs> so basically what's going on, remember the missile guidance chips that Tommy actually stole for um, Colonel Cortez? They were property of the French government. And so the French government has actually sent secret service agents to um, assassinate Cortez. They're not trying to arrest him. They're trying to assassinate him. The reason the U.S. government has done nothing about Cortez is because he was the dictator of that um, uh, fictional Central American country, and so he basically has immunity. But the French, um, they don't care about that. So during the Cold War, the CIA and the U.S. government supported a lot of really nasty um, dictators, in, especially in Central America, and Colonel Cortez is one of those people. Try to just blow the boat up. That'll probably be better instead of just um, uh, shooting the guys off. Well, if there's only two guys, then we'll probably just shoot them off. Okay, there we go on that. Now, oh, we took care of them pretty quickly. But now there's going to be that blockade up ahead. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, they really don't want Cortez to escape. Debris, jump ahead. Here we go, more M4 ammo, perfect. Okay, let's blow these boats up then. I wonder why that boat is still, um, hovering as an enemy when oh it's, um... Oh my god, they've got a helicopter! Come on, kill them! My will lock! 
Shotgun definitely helped with that. And got some more M4 ammo back. Oh, another one. Oh, and I forgot I had this. The minigun. How could I forget about that? And they sent an Apache or a Hunter. That probably already did a lot of damage to it anyways. Whoa, whoa. That was actually pretty easy, just taking down the Apache. <laughs> and the, the helicopter stuck in on the top of his yacht. How are they going to get that overboard? Tomas, you have protected and served me well. And now you must leave us before we reach the open seas. I will lower my personal launch. Keep it, my friend. A token of my gratitude. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, one more request. While I'm away, could you keep an eye on Mercedes for me? I think she could look after herself, but sure, I'll keep an eye out. Gracias, amigo. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo. So even though Colonel Cortez, um, uh, you know, a lot of people think that he's a weird character, um, and people think that he's weird because he's so nice. He's so nice and professional, and he never betrays you, or, um, any of that stuff. But, um, I'll tell you something. Do you know why the reason that Colonel Cortez is actually so nice? The reason is because he's a dictator, like I said. And when somebody is some a dictator like that, they're gonna have really nasty laws against their people. But when it comes to diplomacy, when they're going to be speaking to actual people, other people, you know, interacting with them, they're usually going to be very nice. So that, I would not, um, while Colonel Cortez, I would say that yes, he does consider Tommy a friend, and he does have some loyalty towards Tommy. You gotta also remember, that guy is a cold-blooded, um, dictator. So he's, um, uh, he's done some really nasty things in his country and a lot of coups. Um, unfortunately, there's no place to store this boat, so Colonel Cortez gives you this boat, but there's no place to store it, so you're gonna lose it. Um, but Colonel Cortez is based on a real-life dictator. Like I said in my previous parts, look up the dictator Manuel Noriega in Panama. That's who he's based on. Who's calling? All right, Tommy, it's Paul. I've just heard from a mush that you've been a real naughty boy. Somebody's taken offense to you acting like the big guy all of a sudden, giving it a big shot thing. Well, don't say I never warned you or nothing. Boasting is a mugs game, son. Anyway, I heard there's some price been put on your head, and someone's gonna have a crack at you, so watch yourself. And remember me, mate. So you heard what, um, uh, what, um, uh, uh Kent Paul there said, that somebody, somebody wants you dead. And, um, uh, there's been a price put out on your head. So that is going to be pretty important later on, and I'll explain um, later on. But Ken Paul just basically knows everything that's going on in Vice City. It's kind of crazy. But um, I guess we'll wrap up this part here. So thank you guys for watching. On the next part, what will we do on the next part? On the next part, I guess we'll do the, um, uh, we will do probably Love Fist. Yeah, we'll probably do the Love Fist missions on the next part. So um, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.